Good morning, folks. Back here on the job on the Defender. Uh, today, just moving a little bit further along, uh, I'm not going to be putting on these. I'm not going to be putting those on until I have everything in place on both sides. I went ahead and, uh, and stuck this inside just to get an idea of where it would be. And I kind of just marked off a little bit of the area where this would be taking, you know, taking hold just so it guides me a little bit better than it did on this side as to where to put the clicos. I put a lot of clicos here which would be in the area where this would be uh, which I shouldn't have done. It'll still be alright because I'll be able to take those off. They'll drill through. It'll drill through this top piece and then I'll put uh, the right thickness of rivets. Now I did uh, confirm that I will need to remove this one, this one and the two verticals that are underneath this area there and there now back here i'm not sure if i have to remove this one or this one i won't know till the seats arrive because when the seats arrive hopefully t i get a notice today or tomorrow i'll go ahead and like i uh, mentioned in the previous video i'll build them present them push them up make sure they're inside this indentation <clears throat> and then i'll know exactly where to put in the uh the holes which will then line up with this and i'll have a better idea so that's where we're at right now in order in order for this bottom lip to go through uh it's gonna have to slide into these right here all right and now this is i don't know if this is a what is this is this a rivet or a screw I'm not sure but I'll have to remove both of those and the same thing on this side and see how to either slide it underneath there or cut out the divots so I'm just gonna lay the piece on here first I'm gonna wipe this all down there's some little piece of rubber I'm gonna make sure it's all nice and flush here's some Goop that was used to cover a hole. It's down here. There we go. Make that hole. Make that hole. There's another hole right here. Uh, and here are the rivets that I used when I did the uh, bulkhead removal bar for these support bars that you see right there. And I riveted them from this side and from the top. Let me see if I can. There's the one underneath. So those are short enough rivets that they'll, they'll be able to stay there. And then let's see. Well, what I'm not sure of is, you know, I'll, I'll put the uh, metal to metal bonding here as well as on, as on the uh, piece itself right here. And then that will glue on. Here, I'll hold it with Clicos, just like on this side. Now, this side's not glued on yet. Uh, I'm just making sure it's all fitting right. And so once it's all glued in, then I think at that point is when I'll remove these supports from underneath, right when I'm about to install this. Because once I have the holes drilled uh, through the outside of this with the brackets for the seats, I'll be able to just line this up right where the holes are put some bolts through it attach it it'll be nice and secure once it's secure then i'll be able to drill through holes everywhere hold that with clicos again holding this bottom piece take all the screws off and then pull this piece out glue it and put it in and the areas where i'm going to run the glue i'm going to have to like scuff the bottom of this to make sure it's just some straight metal to metal Although this is galvanized, I think that I might be able to just sandwich it together and not worry about it. See, maybe just maybe just put a sealant around the edge, maybe just some seam sealer, and rivet it and sandwich it together. If water gets in between here, it's not going to do anything because it's not going to get into the vehicle. It will all this will already be sealed from the top from the the top skin. 
So I don't know if you have any suggestions, please let me know. This won't be done for a couple of weeks, and it's now uh, first end of first week of August, or second week of August, 2021. Uh, and that's where we're at so far. So let me uh, go ahead and put it, put this skin in here. I, I was, uh, you know, sanding off a few other little pieces here, opening this this up, and just because it was, uh, it wasn't clearing this. I want to be able to remove anything that's on here, and pull wires out and put them back in, and remove this if I needed to, without it interfering in the skin. So, all right, let's get that done. Okay, so drilled and clecoed this side. Got to clean up all the little aluminum shavings from the drilling that there are everywhere. I took off this side because I had a little bump here and I wanted to see what it was. I mean, there was also some uh, epoxy here, just like there was on the other side. I removed that. And I, I'm just going to clean that up a little bit more and then vacuum this area out before I clecoed everything down. Now the bumps that I was seeing were right around here. I'll hammer those out a little bit more now. All right, so next up, cleaning this up, vacuuming everything, and then putting that side back on, and then I'll be done with the outer skins on both these sides until the seats arrive. And when the seats arrive, I'll have, I'm leaving this panel in, so now when I vacuum all this, I'll put this panel back on on this side and move on from there. All right. Clean the area up. that went into this panel, like 28 I think. I gotta tell you, it's, it's not bad at all. You start on one side and you start moving your way to the other. And sometimes Clicos do stop functioning. Set them off to the side and use another one. The price I paid for them was probably dollar a piece yeah, about 50 of them shipped with a tool for 50 bucks $51 most of them have gone on pretty simply but they're not all going in easy I think it's because I'm not putting them in in the same order I originally drilled and put them in so there might be some flex okay I'm only missing one I'm gonna have to run the drill through it again So these two things are in, everything's clean, uh, put in the uh, side trim, and while I was at it, I went ahead and uh, made these square. Uh, I'm going to have to make the holes up there on the A pillar over there and over there, but I finally made the whole square. Let me show you what it looks like when I just tape it up. 
and measure it. It was a 27 millimeters long by 19 millimeters wide, and the regular hole is just like that. So I put a Dremel, cut just enough on both sides, and then I'll use this little metal saw, body saw, to uh, finish the cuts, and then use the file. All right. All right. And here they are. Now, I don't really... I'm, you know, the harnesses that I have in the door already have this little rubber piece. Uh, but I bought some spare ones so that I can work with them without having to worry about the harness on the, on the doors. Because the harness are actually in the doors right now. Just waiting for me to get working on the electronics up there. But at least this is nice and done. Put the courtesy switch up there. And there's that. Both of them cut. have been modified. Now, if anybody's wondering what the part numbers are for that, I believe Rovers North has them now. They had them remanufactured. Uh, I had purchased them a few months ago. Uh, I had to beg and plead uh, the eBay owner, the eBay seller, to send them to me because he would not. He didn't want to ship them. So I was like, Could you just, just put them in the Royal, Royal Mail and, I'll sh and ship them over. It's BTR8697 and BTR8696. Now, that is the one with the round holes. So it has the round hole up here with the screw position for the courtesy switch, just like back here. Now, the one in the back has a much longer back end than the ones in the front. The ones in the front are shorter in the body of it. And uh, then another bolt would be here, a screw, and another screw at the bottom. Uh, and there we go. Like that, I believe. Go over here. So, right here, yeah, this will go up a little bit. It'll tuck in. Oh, actually, no, it doesn't. This is not the one that goes here. It's this one. So, this will tuck in there. Uh, this does have that I think it's right W R I T H T So then that's how it'll be and then this part will be I believe it's this way. Yeah, super stoked. That's gonna be awesome. And the switch is right there, which would correspond with the tab that's right here on the Puma door to push it. So I have to make sure that this is lined up, whether I have to trim the top or the bottom. I'll do that accordingly and then drill the large enough holes here and here for those for the plugs to go through and that's that uh, okay all right let's see what else is going on all right please excuse the lawnmower or weed whacker or whatever noise that is in the background so when I finished this piece here I went ahead and cut the small holes in the front kick panel trim pieces that I had I uh, made them square and then I figured I would wire this now I had this uh, mud LED lights front and back and they're pretty cool uh, you can turn them on and go red or white but I wanted to have the door function working which now it is and now if I go here door closes it's off the door opens it's on now, I'll turn it off for the time being. Let me show you how I did that. I went ahead and uh, there is a purple wire. That's the positive lead that goes to the light switch that's under there, the, the green one. Then uh, the ground wire, it goes to the ground. And then there is a purple with a white uh, stripe. And that was, that was supposed to be on the courtesy switches, which this car did not have one. So I drilled it out. Uh, about the proper one and then I just put one wire put it here and now since I am gonna have the uh, the trim here I went ahead and fished it you know removed this fished a wire through here got it out over here put a piece of tape on there to tape it up to the to the sound deadening that I have back there down the corner and I put that inside of a loom just for further protection went in there 
and then it goes around the corner it goes down and then uh, continues here around this corner here and then underneath and it's taped up in there and then right to the switch so it doesn't get interference with the uh, the speaker surround it's gonna go here or the uh, quarter uh, window surround that goes in there and so flip it to there Let's see if you can see it all turns off turns on turns off turns on all right so we got it going and then I did the rear one only for this light I don't want every light to turn on if I open up just the back door so the two front doors uh, will be exclusively for that one and that'll be it I think that's a better way to do it all right and uh, that's my battery box for the time being uh, Archie gave me a really cool picture of his setup uh, there's plenty of room in here for two batteries I mean it's, it's a lot of room so I'm gonna go ahead and, and get the dual battery system uh, this battery currently has uh, two leads that go directly to a relay to two relays uh, for the fans and for the for the engine fan and for the AC condenser fan uh, and there'll be some more of that uh, once I get the two battery system I just gotta find the right setup and that's about it just got two pieces of wood in there to keep it from bouncing around and a hard piece of hard foam all right have a good one thank you very much for watching uh, if this is helpful to you, please uh, consider subscribing, hitting the notification bell so you can be notified about any new videos. The dash is like this at the moment uh, because the center console is getting all kinds of stuff done to the trim rings, uh, sorry, to the gauges that are going to go in there and a bunch of switches. So there's a bunch of wiring and stuff. Uh, some of this wiring is from like, like this wiring right here. It's pretty cool. This is from a trailer wiring as the green and the what is their color it's kind of like a mauve and a red and i believe back here there's the green there's the red i gotta do some continuity tests to make sure that those are the right ones and uh no that's a gray one but i believe that all of those colors are here yeah here's that here's the, here's the mauve <laughs> so it's pretty cool that I have some wires that are heading from the front to the back. I'll be able to go uh, from the switches and maybe even put relays here, you know. Uh, I can go positive directly to the switches because those Carling switches are good up to a, like 250 watts. Uh, so I can put a switch, you know, put the battery directly to the switch and then the switch through one of those back here and put a relay back here uh, to continue on to like a rear work lamp or anything like that. But that's where we're at right now. Looking forward to getting the seats in so I can finally make the holes here. I wonder why this one doesn't have holes. Like these did not have the holes. All right, so now I gotta put that back trim piece back on. All right, so I put this piece back on and I just realized I've seen handles that go back here and over here. Anybody have a part number for that? Cause man, I sure would like to be able to just put put some inserts and then just put screws with handles back here. That'd be a lot, a lot easier. Every time I have to take this off, I, I run the risk of damaging this piece. So if you know the part number of these, let me know. Cause I mean, I have the two standouts, the little hi-hats here to put the handles here. I just don't know what part number that is. That seems to be oh, like 13 inches, 14 inches. Let me measure that out. All right, so the space between here and here is 12 and a half inches. What does that end up being? 100, 200, 320, about 300, 319, 320 millimeters. From there to there. Just looking for two handles in black. I already have those handles there, and those look, those look great. And I can have the same thing back there. That'd be great. Some people might say, oh, look, you're a... Uh, your headliner has seen better days. Well, that'll be part of its history. It'll stay like that. <sighs> there it is. That's my final for today. Got that one in. Got this one in. Put the trim back. 
uh, wired in the, uh, the switch here so that it works on only the rear LED light. And now the next step is, oh, I did, I did modify the speaker enclosure that's gonna fit in here from Mud UK. So that's gonna be nice. Uh, next thing I gotta do is uh, get the right uh, crimper so I can crimp the tips on wires that are gonna be on these two connectors because I have to run the wires for the rear defrost and the rear wiper uh, forward uh, to a switch that I'm gonna put in the uh, mud center console. And then here is for the door locks, I'm gonna run this to just a switch on the dash that I'm just gonna be able to push a button up, uh, like a window switch, push a button up and have it unlock and down and have it lock. And then uh, one of the switches that's gonna go in this connector here will be tagged into the rear brake lights so that this, uh, this light turns on. All right, that's where we're at. Thanks for watching, be well.